episode one, bologna and applesauce. Applesauce and bologna, I'm Thor. I'm Eric. And uh, yeah, here's episode one of um, basically a conversation we have weekly since uh, for the last 15 years. Yeah, so we, we, were, uh, we were just talking the other day and it, it's uh, ironic that Marvel just released What If? Because our question was, well, what if we just start recording these phone calls? What if we make that decision, start talking about things? Because it's the stuff people talk about anyway. So here we are recording yep. our rant. It's our weekly rant session. Yeah, it's our weekly rant session, and um, you're welcome to, to listen in. Uh, we have some, we've had had some uh, uh, theories where we wish we had been recording because we were we nailed some things on um, Mandalorian, uh, Marvel. Uh, we talk about some DC stuff here. But um, pretty pretty Star Wars heavy, pretty Star Wars and Marvel heavy. Um, but we we will dip into the DC EU. Um, there there will also be some some theme park stuff. Um, I'm I'm a big big heavy theme park fan. So, I mean, it's it's a big vat of applesauce that we're going to be talking about. There's a lot that we cover. Uh, hopefully, you're interested in something of it. Um, yeah, and but, uh, we we chose uh, we chose bologna and applesauce. Uh, actually, you chose that name because uh, what what does that mean? Uh, applesauce and bologna are basically both mean nonsense uh, in the 1920s. Uh, and seeing as we're living in the 20s right now, it seems fitting that we're reusing 20s words. So we're going to talk about some applesauce, which is probably some good stuff. We're going to talk about some bologna that's probably some rumors and probably some, some bunk and bologna. So, uh, some, that bologna the, that some bologna slices. Some bologna slices. Some BS. That some being BS. the case, um, let's talk about some applesauce. Marvel's okay. What If. Just Loved dropped. It. Just dropped last Wednesday. There's going to be a new episode in a couple days, uh, or or possibly there might be two episodes out by the time that we get this posted. But we'll get to that. Loved it. Yeah, I loved it. Um, I thought uh, Captain Carter was uh, awesome. Uh, the way the way they move. I was surprised how quickly they moved through the the setup to to just how quickly they were like, okay, here's what you knew. And here's, I, I couldn't believe that it was only a half hour at the end of it. It felt like a lot longer of an episode, but right. in a good way. Right, yeah. Because they, they, I mean, they, they, they started right out, right out of the gate. We're in Captain America, First Avenger. Mm-hmm. And, and they hit all the points that they need to hit. The, the Watcher stuff at the beginning, beginning is great. Um, Jeffrey Who's Wright. The, okay, is, yes, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright. Wright. Yeah, loved it. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's, he's great for, for Uatu, the Watcher. Um, you know, I, I love that they started out and they were talking about space, reality, and time. I expected mm-hmm. them to say something about the other Infinity Stones, but they didn't. So it'll be interesting if, if that's actually a play in or if it's just a play on, on words. Um, yeah. But yeah, Peggy Carter decides to, uh, well, heavy spoilers, by the way. Peggy Carter decides to <laughs> uh, stay uh, outside of the viewing booth um, and chaos ensues. And right. Okay. So that so that confused. So that kind of confused me. So I, I got to stop you right there. Like, uh, so I'm not like, how did? I'm not sure what her being out of the booth did that that changed. Okay. You know, so um, Steve so, Steve Rogers not being in the machine. So I, I I of course had to go back and rewatch Captain America: First Avenger. Okay. Right afterwards. Um. So in in the main timeline in the prime timeline. The sacred timeline. The sacred timeline. Right. Um, the Peggy Carter and and General, um, I can't remember his name. The guy played by Tommy Lee Jones, um, and the right. rest and the rest of the military retinue go up to a viewing room. So when when they're up there, that means that the guy that has oh. the bomb is in the viewing room. So when he blows up the bomb. He blows up everyone in the room, but not, not Erskine, not Steve. Um, so it's a it's a different it's a different effect of explosion. It it changed the way it changed how people died. Right. So so that meant that okay. Steve had to get out of the box to to try to stop Peggy from getting shot. R- okay, he, that, that's he where shot. that's where I. Right, that's where I was kind of confused. Where I, I was watching it, where I was like, "Wait, how, how, how does this change? Why would he get out of the thing and stop her?" And, but it's because. The, it, it, the fight unfolded differently because they were up in the viewing room. Right. Erskine dies right okay. away. Uh, Peggy gets in a gunfight with, with the, the assassin. Um, the Hydra guy. The Hydra guy. Yeah. 
Um, Steve gets out of the chamber, he gets shot, can't get in the chamber. Peggy Carter decides to get in the chamber. And now we have Captain Carter. And the ripple effect goes wild. Like watching this episode, yeah, it does. <laughs> watching this episode, the, the what if stuff that happens based on this episode is just like that, 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 that one decision. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So yeah, that one decision for for her to go to, for them to all her to, to to not go to the viewing room. Right. I mean, did we end up with Iron Man basically with the, the, our Hydra Smasher right. that we Steve's had, we, piloting? We, yeah, I, Iron Iron. Uh, Iron Steve. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, built built by Tony Stark's father. So it you know, makes you wonder if there wasn't an inkling of, of that mechanics before Tony built the, the Iron Man Mark I. Right. So we, we, get no, we, get, we get no Winter Soldier. There's no Winter Soldier now. Right. Um, there's Which no... I was a little upset about. I was a little upset about. I really... I, I know... I know that they set Steve up to be in, in the Hydra Stomper, but I really would have loved Steve to end up being the Winter Soldier. And they, they set it up a couple times. Well, I, I was, I, that's exactly, you're exactly onto where I thought they were going in that episode. I was surprised. I mean, I get that it, you know, it's only a one-off episode, so they still well, wanted Steve to kind of be the hero. But I, I, I really did expect that he, they were going to find the suit but he was going to be like missing, and right, like they, maybe there'd be a little by, because he was captured by Hydra, and they had to right, go in and, and that, rescue him. But yeah, right. And then we would have we we would have like a little teaser at the end of the episode, basically showing, you know, um, Steve in some kind of Hydra thing, you know, going, oh, he's going to be the Winter Soldier down the road now, right? You know that that Peg, Peggy tries to Peggy tries to save, but um. But yeah, no, it it, it was interesting though. D- didn't you think it was interesting that uh, as different as ever, as wildly you know different as everything went, that we still end up when she comes back out of the portal, ostensibly like at the same time, a moment in time as the first Avengers movie happens. You know when they wake up, Steve. Right. Right. Or or, or when Loki well, or well, when Loki doesn't. comes through. When or when Loki, Loki comes. Loki comes through. Yeah. When Loki when Loki comes through the Tesseract. That it was still Nick Fury and Hawkeye. That as wildly right. different as everything else went, that state. I mean, and that could which, have just which, been a touchstone. Which led, which led me to question: Does Steve Rogers now go on and and found Shield? Is that started by Steve Rogers versus Peggy Carter? Right. Is it an well, entirely I imagine, I imagine is it an so. entirely different Shield now? Because if when we watch Agent Carter, you know she right. had to fight to get Shield to be what it was because she was a woman. Well, if Steve's in charge, it's a completely different, you know, 1940s, 50s thought process. Right, but they also kind of went off the, I mean, they were way out of, um, they were way, they were way out of their, their bounds. They, they basically existed, the whole, the whole episode of Captain Carter existed like in the first Avenger movie when, um, the, just that first mission when they kind of go off the rails. Because they, they're completely unsanctioned. You know, she even right. she even says right. we and, and and that's actually brought me back to that. Another thing I kind of thought would happen, and maybe if they continue this Agent Carter or this Captain Carter timeline, you know, she says, um, you know, we we might win, we might even lose the war, but we can stop this. Yeah. So what if one of the ripple effects is that they like America? What if America lost the war right. because Captain America or Captain Carter wasn't there to finish? You know. You know, defeating the Nazis because they had to like do this whole Hydra showdown right. with these. Uh, what, what are they called? The Aboleths. Uh, which what, what's the, the interdimensional? The interdimensional creature that oh they, they didn't summons. they didn't necessarily they didn't name it. It was just Hydra the Hydra champion. Uh, but it is an interdimensional being. People people have been saying that it's it it's could be the same creature that we fight in Guardians of the Galaxy two. Uh huh. Um, because it is also called an interdimensional being. Um, so it could be that it's, it's something like that. Um, right. but we don't really know what it is, but, but it is definitely interesting because I did not expect a, a weird tentacle creature, which kind of reminded me of the Leviathan that we see when we watch agents of shield that Hydra right. is trying to pull from a portal. Um, but I expected Loki to come through. Right. Yeah, so, but that, that, it was it was cool. They they kind of pulled a Captain Marvel, where, and, and that was another thing too. Is the Tesseract moves people around in space, but from 
from everything that it seemed like in the, the that first episode of What If, it seemed like for her it was instantaneous. Right. So like that so, she she flashed for like she went into this dimension for like two seconds, killed this this Abolith because it spits out or, or right, the whatever right. it's called the, the interdimensional the, the Hydra's champion spits that out and she comes out. It's like it's been two seconds for her. Right. And, so but it's been so like seventy years. Right. So that's that's the question about the the space stone. Um, where does it send you, and what's it connected to? Because we've, you know, every, everything that happens so far, nobody really goes to the same place, right? So the space stone could be connected to the same nowhere space that the TVA exists in, or or I don't know because cause every time every time we've seen the tesseract, it only moves you around in space. That's I mean that's what you know not not time and not dimensions, right? So that's that. It would be a new thing for that for the test track to have done that, um, but again, that that could have been like part of the machine or the the spell or whatever he did. Maybe it did something. Di- maybe it allowed it to do something different than right. it, we've seen it do, or or whatever know. or whatever interdimensional realm that it was connected to for that being to come through is outside of time. Right. Right. Or um, yeah. Right. That, yeah. That's that's possible too. Yeah. But um, uh, because, no, because, so, because so that was far, a question of mine. Where does Peggy Carter go when she goes through? Because because she's not connected to Asgard. She's she doesn't end up with Thanos, um, and those are all the other places where we've seen the Tesseract connect people. So she ends up somewhere completely different, um, and we don't yeah. know where that is. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, like you said, I, it's probably she goes to the whatever dimension that 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 creature is from. That's obviously where she she pushes it back into and then they when they open up the tesseract again she pops back out because that was like the last place right. it was connected to i guess right so so but, the um, other so the other interesting thing about the tesseract now is the red skull does not die by the tesseract the red skull right. dies by the hydra <laughs> beast which so, was wasn't that great i love so, i loved that moment so I so there so therefore the red skull is no longer the keeper on voromir Right. Well, no, it's a completely. That, that's why I think it's interesting that they brought us, other than just to have the touchstone, so we'd go like, "Oh, yeah, that's just like what happened to Captain America or whatever," you know, in 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 the Avengers. It's interesting that for everything that was different, that we still came back to um, to Nick Fury and Hawkeye at the very end. Right. But now, I mean, so oh, go I was ahead. just I was just going to say. So so now, does the world know who Captain Carter is? Because well, I assume that because they know because that they know who because they knew who Captain America was because he was on a USO tour and he was a war hero. Well, I think they well let's see. I think they do because Hawkeye goes, "That's Captain Carter," and Nick Fury kind of looks at him like, "Yeah, I know." Right. So I mean, at least at least Hawkeye knows. Right. And, and by the way, I would have loved for that to have been Clark Gregg instead of Hawkeye. To, just to play yeah. off that, just to play off that, he loves Captain America. He'd love Captain Carter. I, I was that's hoping true. for that. I, I was okay with Hawkeye being there. You know that that's a good that's a good point because uh, they they totally set up Coulson and um, and Nick Fury in the Captain Marvel movie as their like best buds. So yeah. it is it is interesting that they made the choice for Hawkeye over over Coulson in that. Yeah. But um anyway, anyway, what if so far? I'm. I was worried I wasn't going to like the animation, and I loved the animation. Oh yeah, it was. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, that that aerial sequence. I just have to talk real fast, and then we'll, we 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 can move on to Bad Batch. But I just have to talk about the aerial sequence when they're just like she's taking out the fighters, the fighter planes. That that water, I just kept going like goes through the plane, and yeah, yeah, and then and then does a backflips and then lands back on like the Hydra Smasher. You know, yeah. Steve's piloting. I. I was sitting there watching that, like, oh my god! If if this had been live action, if they'd done that in the first Captain America, they made her more badass. They, oh yeah, she was well, more badass than well, Captain I was, America. I was I was joking with, with my <laughs> wife about that because um, when you watch Agent Carter the show, she is not Peggy Carter is not a reserved person. She is right. she is a very aggressive person. So so we now have a very aggressive and forward moving Captain America, Captain Carter, which. Involves her throwing trucks over her head and throwing people out of airplanes. Yeah, no. It, and, you know, yeah, yeah, I, she, is, she is not a, a modest person with her abilities. Um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and it, was, it was great, too, because they've always said, you know, the super soldier serum enhances who you are. 
So as much as Steve's a Boy Scout, you know, she's, you know, she's sort of like that, I'm going to break the glass ceiling, you know, with my bare knuckles, you know, in, in the Agent Carter show. Right. So, yeah, no, it was, I thought, I thought they very much did her justice of like, nope, this is, if she had gotten the Super Soldier Serum, this is, you know, this is how she'd be. It was, right. it was, it was right. awesome. Right. So, so I have a couple more things before we move on to Bad Batch. So you're just going to okay. bear with me here because I, I have okay, a whole okay, list okay. of things that we need to talk sure, about. Sure, I'm not sure. done. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Give me. Give so, me, all right, give me so some you, more applesauce. So, so you mentioned you mentioned earlier that you thought it was an interesting way that they encapsulated this episode. I don't think they are. I think that all these characters are going to exist in, in the grand scale of what if. And I don't know if, if they're all going to be in the same universe or we're already dealing with a multiversal theory because we're dealing with, with uh, Doctor Strange in what if. So... Oh, I think so all these think... I think all these characters are going to come together in one big what if episode because Hyundai um, you know sponsorship alert Hyundai uh, released a commercial because they've they've partnered with Marvel and they've done an awesome Loki uh-huh. commercial and some stuff they released a, a commercial where it's the what if characters fighting an army of Ultron robots and it's Peggy Carter huh. and it's 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 Party Thor driving a Hyundai it's Doctor Strange. Um, hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if this isn't not a, a secular thing, but an all-inclusive um, what-if universe. Um, oh, so and, now we're, now we're getting into the baloney. Now we're getting right. into like rumors. We're getting right. into our theories. Okay, so so yeah, that's sort of why we wanted to call it that. Is applesauce is going to be our sort of here's the sauce, here's what we know, and then we're going to move into baloney. Uh, so that's just us, you know, wildly spitting, you know, our crazy theories, which and I so I think that's possible. What do you think about this uh, slice of baloney? I think what do you th- what do you think the possibilities are of these characters from what if showing up in live action at some point down the road? I think that'd be fantastic. Um, and I think I, it's I think I, it's completely doable. I, I mean, saw, I, mean for, for, I saw a tweet. I, I did see a tweet. The director of this episode did say that he wants to see. Uh, Haley Atwell in the costume in live action. Um, uh, well, and that's what I'm saying is they they would have to CGI her up. You know, it's not it's not like she can get like you know super. Well, they they super... did it for Skinny Steve. They can put Haley Atwell's face on on a buff chick. That's you know, that's what I'm saying. Is like like a, if, if Marvel wasn't at odds with Gina Carano, they could use Gina Carano and put Haley. I know. Face. I thought of that exact thing. I was like, man, you know, if yeah, if, if uh, but but yeah, they they could they could they could CGI buffer up. But that, that's something I thought too is what what we think the the possibility of these characters showing up in multiverse of madness or quantum mania. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I, and I, I definitely I, I love that idea. I, I want to see these characters. Obviously, we haven't seen the other characters yet, but I'm on I'm 100 percent on board with Agent Carter or, or Captain Carter, as she now is. Um, I, I hope they put her at Disneyland um, because right. they, they, they have Captain America, Steve Rogers. They have Captain America, Falcon. I'd love to see a Captain Carter walking around Disneyland in, in the new uh, Marvel, yeah. Marvel area that, that I have yet to been able to go to. Uh, and hope, we'll hopefully in October have have a report back on that. Um, nice. But, oh, dude, yeah. I can't I can't wait to, I can't wait to to go to the you know and you know I'm I'm a pretty exclusive when I'm going to Disneyland. I I want to hit that Galaxy's Edge. I'm right. all about that Galaxy's right. Edge. But that Marvel campus, I've seen some things uh, on oh, online yeah. about that. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's absolutely. Oh wild. my gosh. Um, so yeah. so so two two more things. Really, really okay. one more thing. Um, you talked about you were worried about the animation. I had mentioned to you that I was worried about the voices. So straight out of the gate, we have two voices in this. One of them is completely different. One of them is you could call different, but could call not different. So, so Steve Rogers, we we get um, Josh Keaton as Skinny Steve. He's he's noted in the in the credits as Skinny Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he was a, a great Chris Evans. I could have sworn it was Chris Evans. Me too. Yeah. I if yeah if, if I didn't know, it, 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 I mean, and you're the one that told me that not all the voices were the, you know the um, were the actual actors from the live action, but everything I heard, I, whoever whoever they've cast, they've cast people that can absolutely right. play those. people. Well, and and I I looked him up on IMDb, and this is not his first foray into Marvel voices. He's done Iron Man before. He's done Ant Man before. Uh, in in video games and, and other cartoons and other media, so okay. Um, 
Second voice, Red Skull, right? Red Skull. Oh, that well, and that guy did a great um, Hugh. Uh, what's his name? Hugo um, Weaving. Yeah, he he did a so, great Hugo so Weaving. So it's I it's actually it's actually uh, Ross Marquand, the guy that was the Red Skull in Infinity War, no, in Endgame. Oh, really? So so they they're using the second Red Skull voice, the second appearance of Red Skull, which is why it wasn't as jarring for me because it's it's the Red Skull. Oh, yeah, that's 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 interesting. I didn't I actually until I was this many days old in my life before <laughs> I knew that Hugo Weaving wasn't the Red Skull in Endgame. Oh, ha, yeah. Moving on. Um Moving on. Let's talk Bad about Batch. Bad Batch. Final episode. We'll we'll kind of kind of cover, you know, we've we've watched a whole whole season wow. um culminating into one of the the best episodes that they had. There's been some really great Bad Batch episodes. This it's, one it really finished strong. This this one really, I mean, it it, it 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 pulls the room together. It's the rug from from the Big Lebowski. Um, yeah, it really did. You know, it, we we get resolution, somewhat resolution with crosshairs. Um, well, exactly, and that's uh, yeah, that's where I that's where I want to start. Is I really honestly thought that um, that they were going to wrap up the crosshair thing, and I and I felt like if they didn't come to a resolution, that I'd be upset. But I actually think the way they handled it, where you know there was some resolution, but there's still conflict for next. Well, it's still season conflict and... for season two. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But but they did make some resolution to it. Like I mean, uh, you know, Crosshair does have to come to a reckoning with. Okay, well, you know, the Empire just sold him down. You know, I I just he can't he can't believe the Empire. I, I mean, maybe he can. I just he's, thought it was. I thought he's it was... a company man. He's towing the line. You know, he's that's... yeah. He's, Even he's, though they tried to kill him, though it's right. like, well, but he, he sees he sees that as yeah. as an expendable thing. You know, that's something that that crosshairs would do. That he, that's in line with his. Yeah, you know, it's true. Um, you know, shoot shoot the hostage. Um, did you get? Did you get? I got emotional. Um, I got emotional watching. I, I got more emotional than I expected to during the sinking and destruction of Camino yeah. because it's such a fixture. Yeah. And that's well, something that well, and Filoni, you, assume, you, you and I have talked about. Go ahead. You, well, and you, you assume going forward that Camino is still there, you know, in, in, yeah. and now it's not. And Well, because it was never, it's never really dealt with, and we never see it in any of the, the sequel, or, you know, the original trilogy or the sequel trilogy. We never, never hear or see. But you and I have talked about what this is one of our favorite things about what Filoni does is he's answering all the questions, all the little details that they didn't have time to get to in the movies. Right. It's like we we now know we know the the fate of the Geonosians and Geonosis. Like we know the fate of Camino. You know, we know the fate of like Naboo. Like what's what's going on? Well, actually we haven't really he hasn't really gotten around to like what's going on on Naboo post, you know, like like I I, I don't know. That that uh that's a little that's another topic, but um Well, but yeah, that's Filoni something does that, a gr- But that's something we talked about too is because this episode leads us into the Mandalorian. You know, the the first two the first two episodes let us out of the Clone Wars and gave us a new thing. Um mm-hmm. it, it gave us a little bit of of um rebels um with with seeing um young Kanan and now now leading out of this he's leading us into the Mandalorian by showing us uh the Dr. Pershing and and his uh clone yep. or science brigade whatever whatever they're going to call him. Um you know, so we're definitely, I mean, it's, it's a big ribbon tying everything and it's going to be a great story and I can't wait to see more. Yeah. You know, they, I can't wait to find out more of, of what's up with, with, uh, Omega, you know, now that we know that she's actually older than the Bad Batch. She's yeah, getting... that, that was a, that was a, uh, that blew my mind a little bit. That was some I didn't see that coming that. Well, actually, actually, I didn't see it coming, but it made perfect sense because, see, she's an unaltered clone. Right. So they were grown really fast, but she's been growing at a regular rate. So what is she, like, eight years old? Well, I mean, we don't, we don't really it, know. I mean, she could, she could be modified. She could be growing at a slower rate. She could be growing at the same rate that Boba Fett is. We don't, we don't know. We don't know if she was created at the same time that Boba Fett was because he was originally called right. Alpha. Right. Um, so so that, again, that's kind of that's kind of my question is so so time, let's let's just for the moment assume 
let's for the moment assume that she's unaltered because they, they said that, well, she's, she's, she's like Boba. So if he's Alpha and she's Omega, let's just assume for the moment, for the sake of my, my argument, that she, she is growing at a, an average rate, like a normal rate. Right. And she's between 8 and 12 years old. So that would place her being created when? Like, uh, we're talking episode sa- same well, same time as the Clone Army. Well, this like this around pe- that this picks you know. up this picks up right at right at Order sixty six. So I mean, six years, six eight years backdated. Um, yeah, because Boba Fett is. Us, uh, I mean, does that put us in Attack of the Clones? That's what I'm saying. Is Boba, Boba but so Bo- if Boba Fett was created first. You know, because he's in Attack of the Clones. Let's say he's between eight and eight twelve. And 10. Yeah, yeah. Eight and ten years old. Okay, so so let's assume Omega. Omega seems like she's about the age Bo- Bo- Boba Fett was when we met him in Episode Two. Right. So, so that makes, yeah. So that makes her basically born right around the time of Episode Two, because then it's ten years later. So, between what? So here's some baloney. Okay. Does that mean that? The Kaminoans, when Jango Fett died, did they decide that they needed to create another genetic strand of his DNA? Right, because, so that it wouldn't because degrade. You, because, because it's 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 a degrade it, it's a degree down in Alpha because he's he's a clone of Boba Fett. But if you now have a clone that genetically can reproduce. Right, you know, uh, that's that's a different yeah, it's, that's a different story altogether. Um, yeah, no, I mean that that actually opens up it ap- actually opens up a whole you know uh, uh, egg uh, it, it cracks up on a whole bunch of like theories about who, like what is up with Omega, but also going back to the the Doctor Pershing stuff is so yeah it, it it very much connects to the Mandalorian and that where do they where do they take all those Kaminoans and all the clone stuff because they basically they they take any kind of cloning stuff or knowledge they want off of uh, you know yeah. Kamino and then they blow it all to hell and and I guess so we're we're led to believe correct that the all the Kaminoans aren't dead they're just like hiding down in their deep cities but those uh, those the cities that we've we've come to you know the clone cities right. that we've come to know basically is the only part of Kamino we've seen that's all gone. Yes. It's too, and now, I mean, and now to basically knowledge. the Kaminoans I, I was actually, are... I was actually worried about that. I'm like, oh, God, is, is Lama Su the only existing Kaminoan left? Um, right. But, but, I mean, it, it could be, you know, it could be in a very galaxy-wide, you know, uh, that, you know that, that city was probably not the only city on, on Kamino. Um, right. That they're just, they're basically trapped on their planet now. Like, they, they, they're they right. trapped in these underwater cities, and they're basically out of, they're out of the galactic picture at this point. Right, right. Um, yeah. And, and how, how dare, how dare they Big Hero 6 me with, with Omega, and I, I can't remember the droid's name, but how dare they put us in, in a tube where he's running out of power and he he's dying, you know. It's, right. It gave me it gave me all the same feels as Big Hero Six when you you see you know. Yeah. He's he's falling down. It's like no, you can't you can't make an emotional connection and then kill him. You're, you're you can't do that with everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I it, I got emotional. It was like I said. I did not expect the the last episode of this to jump out and get me like uh like it did. And like like you said, there's been some. There, I mean, all the Bad Batch episodes I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed all of them. But there's been some that have been, you know, just sort of like, okay, this is a this is your run of the mill, you know, adventure. Um, but the the ones where they really hit and they picked their moments, the ones where they really decided to get, um, you know, really heavy. I mean, I keep thinking back. Say, and you and I've talked about this before, but the episode where Crosshairs they they kill Saw Gerrera's like whole like the refugee camp. That's heavy, and there has to be a reckoning for crosshairs in that way. Like, I don't think, I think we, you know, they're doing a really good job of we want him to be redeemed. I think we want him, I think, I I do anyway. I keep thinking he's going to come around, but I think he's kind of that tragic character that you need in a Star Wars movie that he's, you know, he's he's cursed. You know, it's going to have a tragic end. And I just I keep I keep wanting Crosshair's story to to be ha- a happy ending, but there's just no way it could be because the 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 episode we were talking about, like the 
uh, the other day about the, where Crosshair wipes out with those Stormtrooper commandos. Right. The whole, Saw Gerrera's whole, like, refugee camp. There, there has to be, a, he can't, I, I just kind of realized that at the end of this episode. I'm like, yeah, you know, he can't ever come back to the light side, you know, if we're using, you know, Star Wars terms. He's, he's <clears throat> cursed. You know, it's, he's going to have a tragic ending. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, and, and I just think, you know, th- th- he's done such a good job of it being it being light and it being a cool series that you can enjoy and picking his moments to go heavy. But, yeah, just to, just to wrap up Bad Batch, like that that last episode hit me a lot harder. I didn't expect to have feels about, um, you know, them blowing up Kamino. But. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that was That was something else. Um, and it's just it's just advancing Star Wars. It's it's putting whole new spins on things that that you didn't expect. And I, I love that. It's what Dave Filoni has been best at with all of Clone Wars with Rebels. Um, yeah, and filling and, out those margins, filling those those blank spots that, but both the stuff that we as Star Wars fans have always wanted, the answers that we've wanted, and then stuff that we didn't even know we wanted. That's that's the, the, I think where it's not people people accuse him of being into fan service, but the way he does it is so smart and and respectful to like the material so it's not just well i'm doing it because you fans want it it's well oh so i'm gonna tell you this thing and it's not it might not be what you expect but you know if if you're if you have an open mind and you know we should because you know we don't own star wars we just get to we just get to visit it so oh and speaking of visiting uh star wars uh do you see the new uh galaxy's edge train uh uh Trailer? trailer, trailer, poster, pricing sheet that set the internet on fire. Um, I'm crazy looking forward to it. Hopefully, in an upcoming episode, we'll be able to talk to you about going to it. Yes, when we are planning. If, when but, and if I we're... sell my kidney, um, <laughs> right. but we'll get to it. We we will get to it. Mark my words. Um, we briefly briefly considered robbing a bank, but we're 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 terrible terrible criminals. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, maybe. Maybe maybe I can collect enough coaxium uh, right. at, at Galaxy's Edge to, to be able to, to finance my trip. Uh, We're going to be in debt to Jabba the Hutt forever, yeah, basically. Yeah. But we are going to go. We are, we are definitely planning on going. Um, but also, until then, um, the Galaxy's Edge uh, Oculus Quest game has some new content. Galaxy's Edge Volume 2, extra content for the Oculus Quest. Drop the new trailer. Uh, it looks so fun. I don't remember the exact name of it. Um, last call, last, last call. call. Did, yeah, which which is great because it's it's at the bar. You know, it's like last call at the bar. I hope right. it's not the only. I hope last call isn't any sort of reference to the, that. This is the only. Well, you know, like um, we got we got three episodes of Vader Immortal. Hopefully, they'll they'll round out and at least give us three of this, if not more. I loved playing it. I need to get back. Uh, I, I didn't finish the the Jedi stuff at the end. I need to get back to that. Um, I loved pro- watching you play it. It, it was oh, like and, wa- and watching I'll, you I'll play it was like. <laughs> and I'll probably start streaming that on on our channel. So so stay stay up to date for for video streaming and stuff of, of us uh, making idiots of ourselves in uh, in VR. Um, <laughs> I do but, I do enjoy watching you play, but I can only even watching you. I can only do it for about a half an hour before I start getting like dizzy, yeah. and I can't yeah. even imagine what it's like in the the Oculus. It's it's definitely it, it can be disorienting. Um, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you you definitely you you enter that world and, and thing changes, and then you you exit that world, and and your your body takes just the same adjustment getting into VR as it does getting out of VR. I was dropping stuff on the floor, thinking that I was just going to put it on. You know, it's just going to float where I put it because that's what VR does. I wish I wish we had been streaming this so that everybody could have seen you like finally realize that you could um, that you could hold uh, a bla- a, you know a second blaster. Right. Because right. watching you watching you fiddle with your your tools and having to throw blasters away yeah. was was difficult at first, and I was like, man, this I don't know about this gameplay. And then you're like, oh wait, I can totally. To have two blasters. Okay. Yeah, yeah. F- figuring out how to put stuff in in my holsters and, and store items, and yeah, it was it was a learning curve because they they definitely don't come out and give you a, a tutorial. It was it, you're in the game and ready to go. Um, yeah, and, and, and just like Invader Immortal, yeah, learn, learning how to climb too is also a fun thing to watch somebody from the outside in watching them. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Right, but yeah, so, no, I'm. So I mean, uh, that's that's new stuff. Um, 
plenty of upcoming stuff to talk about. Um, we have uh, Titans season three. Uh, there's now three episodes out of that. I just watched the first one this morning. I know I it's, need to get caught up. Or it's you're gonna spoil so, it for me. I know it's so good. It's so good. They're going. They're going straight into Death in the Family. They're going straight into the Red Hood. It's well, yeah. I saw. So I saw the whole. I saw the whole. Batman's gone, and I was like, "Oh, they are. Are they going to do? Are they going there? Are they? Are we? Are we going there? Yeah. So, so very so cool. Titans. We have plenty of upcoming Marvel. I mean, they they got stuff coming out the yin yang. I mean, we we have we have uh, Shang Chi coming up. We have the Eternals coming up. We have Spider Man. No speaking, trailer. Speaking no of trailer things home. coming out the speaking of things coming out the yin yang. Um, uh, yeah, Shang Chi. Real excited. We, we basically we went a little long today. It's first episode, but um, we're gonna have lots of content coming up. Our next one, uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be having it out. It's gonna be applesauce versus bologna. Bologna versus applesauce. Uh, we have very different opinions about Suicide Squad, which I finally uh, finally was able to to catch. Yeah, and we're and we're talking about the James Gunn Suicide Squad, not the David Ayer Suicide Squad. The new new Suicide Squad. Well, you you're going to bring up the Ayer Suicide <laughs> Squad. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking about the new Suicide. Squad, I I, we'll, I know we are, but we'll get to that. We'll so so <laughs> plenty plenty in the future. Um, I mean, we got Free Guy that just came out this weekend. We have What We Do in the Shadows uh, that's getting a third season coming up this month. Um, We're going to have to talk about the Mandalorian gallery, uh, the Luke Skywalker gallery. behind the scene. Yeah. We, we have we have new, uh, you know, all the new content that's coming out on Disney Plus. We have the 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 monsters at work. We have. Um, uh, are you are you finally caught up with that? I'm, I, I'm, I'm loving not. That I'm show. not. I'm halfway through it. Um, we we have. Uh, oh God, the dog show that I'm completely Turner and Hooch. Tur- yeah, Turner, Turner and Hooch. Hooch. Um, Turner and, and Hooch. And I got they, you into that. And they dropped a trailer for Doogie Kamealoa, MD. I did. I saw. I saw that coming up. Yeah, we definitely need to talk so about. So we're going to talk Doogie about Howard. that. We're going to talk yeah. about all the other stuff. Uh, Suicide Squad is going to get its own episode because I'm sure we're probably going to we're, we're going to just blow each other's yeah, we're, ears we'll off. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. But yeah, well, for, you know what? We'll, today, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll fold the Titans in on that. We, we can maybe fold the Titans okay. on that because I'm sure we'll want to talk about. How we how we think because we want we want Warner Brothers to listen to us. You know, don't, don't even need to hire us. Don't even need to pay us. Just listen about what they should do with their dark uh, DCEU universe. But um, but yeah, uh, not not too bad. Uh, not yeah. too bad, my friend Thor. Uh, so, for first, so first shot. So I mean, uh, we've we've given you quite a a, a heaping helpful of applesauce and bologna uh, today. Uh, Hopefully, we, we gave you some really uh, in-depth insight, uh, made you question some things, and ask what if. Uh, until next time, I'm Thor. I'm Eric. And, uh, yeah, please please uh, let us know how terrible we are in the comments. Uh, it'll make us feel good that you uh, took the time just to tell us if you hate us or like us or uh, what else you want to, maybe want us to talk about, any suggestions, ideas, um, or just tell us to, to give up on our dream. Yep, and this podcasters. this and this this will be uh this will be dropping on our our YouTube page, uh, and dropping on our Facebook page, uh, so definitely like, follow, share, subscribe, press the little bell for for notifications, all the extra stuff, and uh, hope to see you next time on Applesauce and Balloons.